Hi, my name is Steve James. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 437. Exceeding great and precious promises. There are many great promises in God's Word, and as we learn them, we can apply them to our lives and live abundant and victorious lives. Take your Bibles and go to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. And I'm entitled in this teaching, Exceeding Great and Precious Promises. And I'm just going to read some of this by exceeding great and precious promises. That's what God has given to us. And we can use all the ones that we know. So it's good to know a bunch because you could we could use a bunch of those <laughs> exceeding great and precious promises to live the more abundant life. But in chapter 1, verse 1 of 2 Peter, now this Peter is one of the first people that came to Jesus Christ to learn some spiritual knowledge. When John the Baptist said, Behold the Son of God, Peter was one of the first people to go seek him, to see what he had to say. That's who we're talking about here. This is what this Peter is. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that obtain like precious faith or believing with us through the righteousness of God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our Savior. He's the one that accomplished it so that we could be righteous. Verse 2 says, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Say, grace and peace are multiplied to us through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. We come to fellowships like this so we can gain in our knowledge. We can learn about God and the things of God and all that our Lord and Savior accomplished for us. And verse 3 says, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him. It says here in God's word that he has given us all things, not most of it, all, all, all things that pertain to life and godliness. And those are the most important things in life. Yeah. Life, <laughs> godliness, through the knowledge of him. Once again, it's the knowledge of God. The knowledge of Jesus Christ that has called us to his glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Every believer mm -hmm. has available to them exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature the heavenly nature, the spiritual nature. Having escaped, escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, give all diligence. Really pay attention. Get it. Read the word. Diligence. And give all diligence. Add to your faith or your believing and to virtue knowledge. In other words, we're going to, as we know a little bit, we're going to gain a little more knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. We're going to be patient. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness is we care for the, our fellow man brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity the love of god in the renewed mind in manifestation 
or the love of God in our minds in action. We become lovers, lovers of people with that love of God that we receive when we get born again. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, barren means you don't get anything. Right. And unfruitful means you get less. No, <laughs> you know, you don't get any fruit. But you will be fruitful if you do this these things that we just read. We believe, we get power, we're, we're going to gain knowledge, we're going to be temperance, we're going to be patience, we're going to have godly love for our brothers, the fellow man. And then we're going to get that and utilize the love of God. And these, if these things be in you and abound, they make you neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind. He doesn't quite see and cannot see afar off. He can't see afar off. The truth is he can't see close either. And has forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. God has called us and he's called each of us to do something. So we have a calling in our election. I like to look at this word election as sidewalk. Sounds okay. kind of weird, huh? Sons of God with all power. That's who we are. We're sons of God with all power. We have the power to do what we need to do and what we can get done. So we want to give diligence to make sure we know our calling and the power we have to get it done. For if ye do these things, ye shall only fail a little bit. Oh, never. It says never fail. Never fail. If you want to be successful in life, that's what you give diligence to know who you are. For so in, in entering shall be ministered unto you abundantly unto everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He has called us to his kingdom, the kingdom of God, accomplished by Jesus Christ. And this kingdom will last forever everlasting it's a lot longer than just what's here on this day and time and it's it was accomplished by our lord and savior jesus christ therefore i will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things and that's what every good minister does he'll put you in remembrance to who you really are. You're a son of God with all power. Though you know them and be established in this present truth, yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Peter is saying, as long as I've got this life, I'm going to put you in remembrance of these things, that you're a son of God with all power, that you're righteous, your sins have been forgiven, you're going to heaven and all hell can't stop you. All the things that you can learn in God's word, I'm going to put these in remembrance. I want you to remember them so that you can have them for the rest of your life which is eternal. Knowing that shortly, I must put off this tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me. Here's the apostle Peter. He got revelation that said he's not gonna live much longer. But that doesn't bother him. 
as long as he's alive, he's going to put people in remembrance of what our Lord and Savior accomplished for us. He's going to do that. And moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. When I read these verses, I think, well, that's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I want to keep teaching the word as long as I possibly can. I have not gotten any revelation that my time is at hand. <laughs> but I do know this. I've lived a lot longer than I'm going to live from here unless Jesus Christ returns. And then, well, I'll be with him and right. you guys will be there too. Mm -hmm. So, but, so I just keep going to keep teaching the word. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep putting people in remembrance of what's available, bringing them to the knowledge of God's word so they can tap into those resources of those exceeding great and precious promises. Mm -hmm. We can utilize all the ones we know. I've heard there's over 900 promises in the word of God. There's a lot of promises there. We looked at one last week that if we pray for our country, that that's what God wants us to do. And if we do that, we can expect, expect good government. And that's why we prayed for some of that stuff this morning. We want and expect God to work for us. Verse 16 says, For we have not followed cunning, deviced fables when we make known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Peter was one of the first disciples of Jesus Christ. He was eyewitness. He was there when John said, Behold the Lamb of God. And they followed him. He says, I'm eyewitnesses of this. For he... He received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. On the Mount of Transfiguration, the apostles were there, some of them, and they heard a voice saying, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. They heard it. They, Peter was a pretty good witness. He was right there. 18. And, and this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. He heard the voice of God. He saw Jesus Christ. And here he is saying, and we have a more sure word of prophecy. And we do well to take heed of that. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. Until the day dawn. And the day star rise in our hearts. He is saying it's just like when you see a dawn coming up. The first light, when you see it, you go, wow, this is cool. This is nice. And what happens is we, we get blessed. We're blessed. And all of a sudden, the sun keeps moving up. And it gets better and better. And that's what he's saying. We've heard the word. We started to believe it. And it was this crack of sun. And then it kept going. And it kept going. And he says, and we have a, sh a more sure word of prophecy. That more sure word of prophecy has to be that we can manifest Holy Spirit that we can speak in tongues. We heard messages today from God. 
That's a more sure word of prophecy. They heard, this is my beloved son. We heard that God backs up his word. We can expect to see his word come to pass in our lives. That is pretty cool. And then verse 20 says, knowing this verse, that no prophecy of the scripture, nothing written in the scripture is of any private interpretation or one's own interpretation. For the prophecy came not in olden time by the will of man. You know, a bunch of people didn't get together and say, hey, let's write the Bible. It didn't come that way. But this is how it came. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. God is the author of his word. It's full of exceeding great and precious promises. And we can tap into those. And we can be just like the person sitting at the crack of dawn and getting a little light and it continuing to get better and better and better. We can be just like that. We got these exceeding great and precious promises. I think that's just wonderful. Go to 1 John, which is real close to where we are now. Just a couple pages back is to the back is 1 John chapter 5. And I want to start in verse 13. And this is John, and he was one of the original uh, apostles and disciples of Jesus Christ, too. And this is what he says in chapter 5, verse 13. These things have I written unto you that ye believe on the name of the Son of God, and that ye may know, not question, not doubt, but know, that ye have eternal life. We know we have eternal life. And that we may believe on the name of his, the Son of God. When we believe on the name of the Son of God, his name, by the way, is Jesus Christ. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So we prayed today. Last week I made a statement and I says, one of the great purposes of saints gathering together for fellowship is to pray. That's one of the great reasons to get together is to pray. And we do that here. And we hear from God. The main reason for fellowships is for helping others come to an accurate knowledge of the truth, for teaching the word, for outreach. It's all about helping others with the things of God. We meet here for that number one purpose. We're all in this together, and this is what we like to do. And if we ask anything according to his will, the word of God is the will of God, he hears us, verse 15, and if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. So if we know the word of God, then we know the will of God. We ask according to that word. We know he hears it, and we know we have it. That is a result of believing God's word. Believing is the key to receiving God's word. It's the good key too. Let's go to Mark chapter 11. In the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, we're going to stop at Mark chapter 11. And we're going to start in verse 22. And here's Jesus teaching his disciples about believing and how to utilize believing and how to, what believing's all about. And Jesus answered and said unto them, 
Have faith. That word faith should be believing. Have believing in God. Or a simple translation would be believe God. Here, this morning, I was reading God's word. So we believe that. We believe God. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain. And there's a couple things I want to point. It says that whosoever. Now, whosoever means everybody. Anyone who hears the word, whosoever. We're all whosoever's. There's no question about it. Shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. See, doubt can be in your heart. But he says here, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass, and he shall have whatsoever he said. Look at verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things ye desire, when ye pray, get on your knees. No. Oh, excuse me. Give all your money. No. No. What's the one thing that God's asking us to do? Believe. Believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. The word shall puts it in the absolute. We shall have them. When we pray, we were required to do this thing. It's called believe. And when we do, we shall absolutely have it. We act like we've already got it because we will get it. We will receive it. It's called the law of believing. It's called a law because it's faithful. It happens all the time. Like the law of gravity. Heard about that one? Every time the law of gravity works. That's why they call it a law. The law of believing works every time. You find a promise, one of those great, exceeding, precious promises. I wanted to say it exactly like it was written. You believe it, and you get it. It's just simple. You want it? Believe it. That's how it works. I got a statement I want to read to you. It says, the person who says that they can, and the person who says they can't, are both right. See that? The person who says, I can, and the person who says, not me, I can't do it, they're both right. We can believe all the promises in God's word, and we can receive. The thing is, we got to believe. It helps us to believe. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. In verse 2, you know what they call us sometimes? And we call each other. We call each other believers. I like being called a believer. It helps us in believing. What are you? I'm a believer. I believe the word and I'm going to receive the word. That's what I'm going to do. It says in chapter 4, verse 2, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. Others heard the word of God too, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with believing, faith believing, and then them that heard it. Two groups of people in a place. Mm -hmm. They all hear the word of God. Some of them believe, and they get it. Some of them do not believe. It's not mixed with believing. They don't get it. I want to be one of the ones that gets it. I want to be called a believer. I don't want to just be called a believer. I want to be a believer. To believe the great things in God's word. And look at verse 16 in the same chapter 4. 
let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that ye may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. We have a need when we, something comes across our path. We need something. We can come boldly to God and pray and find grace in the time of need. Pretty wonderful. I want to close in one section of God's word that is so important. It's Romans chapter 10. And we're going to start in verse 8. What saith it? What's, what does it say? You ever heard someone say that? What do you say? What does it say? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of believing, which we preach which we preach here, that if thou shalt confess, confess means to say it, confess, I say it, I believe it. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved born again, receive that virtue, that power. It's a spiritual power. It's Holy Spirit. And then you can learn to operate that Holy Spirit by reading God's word, having been taught it, and then practicing it and start to receive exceeding great and precious promises. Verse 10, for with, well, with the heart, the man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. If you believe in the word, you believe in what Jesus Christ accomplished for you, you will not be ashamed. I want to end with this thought, okay? You are and I am today where our believings brought us. We'll be tomorrow where our believing brings us. We can believe the promises of God's word and receive that. And that can be our lives. Mm -hmm. Our lives can be a lives of victorious living, the more abundant life. Jesus Christ came so that we could have it. And it takes one thing, one word, believing. We need to believe the word and then we can receive it and then have that more abundant life that Jesus Christ came to make available. Tap into some of those exceeding great and precious promises and utilize them. And we'll help each other to do that here. Yep. Okay? God bless. We are a listener-supported podcast. I want to thank those who generously give so that we can keep the podcast available. The podcast is heard around the world for all those who would want to know how to accurately understand the Bible when they read. The episode is complete, so head over to stevejanes.com. If you're interested in learning how to read the Bible, there's also an audio class and companion books available on how to Read the Bible for Understanding and Power. The website has audio teachings and biblical studies books all there to help you grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen next week for another reading of God's wonderful, matchless Word.